So here we go. Welcome to APBC Calculus. First lesson, very straightforward. Uh, first chapter, I think, should be very easy. If it's not, you got a lot of work to do, so get on top of life. Uh, I like to put some fun quotes in here. So a journey of a thousand miles starts with but a single step. About as good a quote as I can get in here. So uh, by the end of this chapter, you're going to be able to find increments. I'll show you what that means in a minute. That's delta y and delta x. Slopes of line, parallel and perpendicular lines, all sorts of good things like that. Equations of lines, which we're going to stick with point slope almost entirely, so be prepared for that. Uh, you're going to create a linear model, which you're going to usually use your calculator to do. Uh, all this is essential. None of this is, well, yeah, we're going to go over it, but you don't really need it. Uh, there's not a single thing on this list that I'm looking at that I'm saying, eh, it's not that big a deal. Uh, you're going to need to understand functions in their graphs. Uh, I can't overstate this one. E to the x, e to the negative x, log of x, log of neg uh, negative log of x, all that stuff pops up all the time. Natural log of x, all that. Uh, understand what even an odd function is. Understand domain and range. Domain and range is something that, uh, like I said, I'll tell you when you really need to know it, isn't that big a deal. We touch on it. We use it. I want to make sure you understand it, but at no point in time am I like, wow, if you don't know this stuff, you're dead. Uh, even in odd functions, you should know because they do that actually every now and then in questions. And what does that mean in terms of symmetry? Uh, things like that. Piecewise functions you need to know because we graph them all the time. You don't really need to know how to graph them. You need to know how to understand them. Absolute value functions and then composite functions, which, wow, you're going to see a lot of that, a lot of that. And I put these little comments after the Things like, ah, oh, this is not too hard, but boy, you're really going to need to know that. Exponential growth, decay, the number E, talked about all this already. Parametric equations, which people freak out about because we can write some really hard problems with parametric. Don't worry about it. It's not going to be a problem. You're going to have no, no concerns with this whatsoever. <clears throat> um, I will give you some challenging problems. It'll take you a little work to do, but the hard part about parametrics, uh, is when you have to convert them back and forth. We'll do that in class, but it's not on the AP exam. It's just to help you understand it. So it's not a big deal. Understand what a one-to-one -one function is. Eh, that's not a big deal. Inverses pops up, logarithmic, like I said, and models. And then this is the big one for me. If you don't know trig, get out of this class now. If you don't know it ice cold, go figure it out. I cannot overstate that. The study of calculus is the study of trigonometric functions and how they work and how they relate and so on and so on. So you have to know that, ice cold. It's not something that you have an option to kind of fake, to tap dance around, it's, it's simply not gonna work. So calculus is a different type of math where things are no longer exact. Um, you got straight lines and they're very simple to understand. Well, now we got curves and we draw straight lines on them. So the best example of that I'll throw up here is, um, coordinate plane with uh, simple enough y equals x squared and we want to know what's going on at this point right here and at this point we have a tangent line that just comes out and barely kisses the line so we are constantly drawing straight lines on curves and we have an equation to figure those out and then once we figure them out then we talk about the individual points and so on and so on so <clears throat> if you're used to things being kind of settled, calculus bothers a lot of people. You've got a lot of work to do. So you've seen this. <clears throat> it's not that big a deal. Let's jump up here. Uh, slope is written M. Is a great story about why it's M. I believe it's the French word for hill, but nobody really knows why. And it's Y2 minus Y1. If you want to do Y1 minus Y2, that's fine. Just be consistent, top and bottom, 2, 2, 1, 1 doesn't really matter where you start as long as you're at the same place, which is a delta y over delta x. By the way, I have atrocious handwriting, so I work really hard to be neat during my videos. Hopefully that works. Now, here's the fun part. Calculus, these deltas are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. They're actually going to vanish, which is the brilliance of Isaac Newton. And he uh, came up with certain notation, but a German guy named Leibniz actually was doing this concurrently. He said, as these get down closer and closer, particularly the fraction on the bottom gets down, the delta on the bottom gets down closer and closer to zero, we change it from delta to the Greek equivalent, that's capital D, 
which is just a lowercase delta, which being lazy, we have just learned to write as dy dx because putting these little curves in really slows us down. So this means delta x tends to zero, which should raise alarm saying, how, how do I divide by zero? That's impossible. Well, now you can put it on a resume, you know, under special skills, say I know how to divide by zero because I can do calculus. Um, I actually wrote that once on a resume and a guy looked at it and he opened his mouth, asked me a question and I was waiting for it because I can answer the question. And then he just kind of changed his mind and moved on. So I thought that was pretty hilarious. So point slope form, y2, uh, do I want to write it that way? No, I don't. Let's write it, change color among other things so we can see what's going on. Y minus Y1 equals slope X minus X1. Oh dear Lord, please get this down now. Please, please, please. This is gonna be used everywhere. We're not using slope intercept. We're not using general form. We're not using standard form. We're gonna add this to both sides. I'm gonna do this all year long and well into April, I will still get, what did you do there? Wait a minute, how did you write that equation? And it's just going to just drive people batty because they're so used to y equals mx plus b. That's how they've been taught since sixth or seventh grade. And oh, that's all that matters. And this is just some weird something else teachers do. No, this is how we're going to do it. Please, please understand that. We're going to get the slope from using calculus, using something called the derivative. This is it right here. That's the derivative. We're gonna get two points or have to go find them. And then we're done. We just write it. Y equals derivative times X minus the X point plus the Y point. Done, done with the problem. It's another big issue that calculus causes people is they don't understand. Sometimes you're done. They wanna keep going and they don't quite get it. The general form is written as AX plus BY equals C. Uh, as long as A and B don't both equal zero. Uh, we used to call it standard form. All right, so find the slope, write the equation of y in all three forms. I'm not going to do that. I'm just gonna go real quick, delta y over delta x equals y2 minus y1, I would never, write all this out in the future. I would just do the problem. Although I highly recommend labeling the, pro the points. Why do things wrong when you can do them right? So one minus negative two, and I do this a lot with the plus plus. Well, what'd you just do? Negative, negative, and positive. You gotta be faster than that if you're gonna be in this class. Equals three. And now pick one, I don't care. I like the form of one, there's no negatives. Y minus one equals three X minus four plus one plus one. I would not normally rewrite it, but why not? Y equals three X minus four plus one, done. I will write it the other ways just in case you feel like you need to have closure in slope intercept. It's y equals 3x minus 11, just distribute and combine. And then in standard form, just solve it for, you know, move the 3x over and keep the positive and blah, blah, blah. We get 3x minus y equals 11. We're not going to do this. We're going to do this. Please, please, please be ready for that. So what about parallel perpendicular lines? This pops up a little bit. Uh, perpendicular is gonna get a different name. They're gonna go with normal. It means the same thing, but they're gonna go with normal. So, so here we go. Write an equation for line that is parallel and perpendicular line, y equals three x minus four. We're gonna go find the slope. All right, m equals three. So that means m parallel also equals three and m perpendicular 
equals negative one third. Flip it, negativize it. Yes, negativize is a verb. I don't want to hear you complain about it. And off we go. Y minus two equals three times X minus negative one. So that means our parallel y equals 3x plus 1 plus 2. Perpendicular y minus 2 equals negative 1 third x plus 1 y equals negative 1 third x plus 1 plus 2. Math that has to be done quickly, rapidly. You got to be able to do this fast, right? So, what line is perpendicular? X equals negative three. Now, you need that extra time to start getting good at this. Great, but boy, you really need to know this. Missed. All right? Goes to the point negative three, four. One, two, three, four is up here. So that line is. Y equals four. Some tricks of the trade. Uh, a vertical line has undefined slope. Because if I draw U, that's the first shape I would make. A horizontal line has zero slope. Because if I drew a zero, that'd be the first shape I'd make. A student taught me that. I thought that was a pretty cool idea. And I give you some data and I say, go find the equation of line. By the way, what's this f of x thing? It's just like y, but means it's a function which has certain rules. the biggest of which it passes the vertical line test. And that means that we have something we can do calculus to. We can't do calculus unless we have a function, uh, although we find lots of cool ways to cheat with polar coordinates and parametric equations. Uh, but yeah, that's what it means. Just instead of y, it's f. Got to know that. Got to have that locked in. So let's go find our slope. m equals 14 thirds minus <coughs> negative 4 thirds over negative one minus one equals six over negative two equals negative three. So back to point slope, f of x minus 14 thirds. And I just picked the first one. You can pick any one you want equals negative three x. Look at me, I'm already shortcutting. Minus negative one x plus one going to have to get used to that. Do not be shy about asking questions. Always ask. That's what I'm here for. But if I get a little exasperated, don't be surprised. We do this over and over and over and over and over. And some students are just zoomed out for a second. And suddenly, what? what just happened? And they ask, yeah, we already did this. We've already talked about this. So hope you can pick up on it. All right, let's see you do it with Fahrenheit and Celsius. Well, I know that uh, 212 degrees Fahrenheit is the same as 100 degrees Celsius. And 32 degrees Fahrenheit is the same as zero degrees Celsius. So we have to figure out which order we want. We'll go with F comma C, which means we have 212, 100. And you go either way if you want, 32, zero. But now we're saying X and Y, this is important to understand X and Y or F of X, but I, I still go with Y's. So that means that we have to find the slope. So it's a change in Y, 100 minus zero over the change in X, 212 minus 32. And a lot of people are probably like, do you really have to slow it down that much? And the answer is yes, very much so. And now we can write it in point slope form. C minus, I'm going to pick the bottom one, 
zero equals five ninths F, that's my X, minus 32. C equals five ninths F minus 32. Oh wait, I should distribute that out. No, I'm good. It's perfectly fine as is. Just because you've been taught self intercept your entire life doesn't mean that's the way you have to do it. All right, that's it. Well, what if I wanted to do this in terms of Fahrenheit? Then, you know, go nine down. Well, why not do that? Move the nine fifths over. So, and then add 32. F equals nine fifths Celsius plus 30, whoops, two. Right? Reciprocal nine fifths at 32 done. Wait, this is in so point slope. This looks like slope. Who cares? Doesn't matter, right? You've been taught by your math teachers there's one and only one way to work. If you don't do it, I'll kill you. This is not that class. Helps if you know that from the get go. All right, so what's a better way to model data? I just showed you how to do it by hand. How about we do it with a calculator? So. A lot of people don't pay attention when I show them. They just kind of, uh-huh, that's nice. Stat, edit, enter. I've already written in the data in L1, L2. What's this L3 thing? Well, I left a couple numbers there. To clear it, clear, enter. Careful about deleting it. You'll lose your L1, L2, L3. Second, quit. Stat. Calc. Now we're going to be playing with this a lot. I actually look, this is a really linear regression. L1 and L2 are in there. Frequency list, don't know what that means. Store, I'd like to store it in Y1. Alpha, calc, enter. Puts it in Y1. Enter. Does the dirty work for me? So I'm going to write it down over here. Notice it puts it into slope intercept. Great, fine. What do I care? Y equals 79.957. Here's a little hint. We're almost always going to go three. We are always going to go three decimal places. Be aware. So that's uh, times X, where year is X and the population is y minus one five three eight four eight hey i thought you said we're gonna go three we are 0.716 good habit to get into all right hmm, interesting uh how do i clear out of this whatever i wrote it down but no i need to use it on the calculator that's okay we were smart we saved it up here Second, quit. Let's see if I can say, well, what's the population today? Y1 of 2021. 7.744 million. I wonder if that's accurate. Current world population, which is changing very quickly. We're off by 100 million people. That's, that's a lot of people, but it's actually pretty incredibly accurate considering the <clears throat> most recent data point is 2005. So cool, cool stuff, cool math. So there it is. And now you can use it as a model. Three decimal places on the AP exam. I don't know how to say it any clearer. Three decimal places on the AP exam. You're going to need to do that on all your tests this year. Three decimal places, three decimal places, three decimal places. Well, what about six feet? Just three decimal places. We'll sort the rest out later. All right, that's a lot of work for you. Keep you on your toes. Good luck and happy mathing.